Today we're gonna go over some different tips, tricks, and hacks to successfully raise baby chicks and to make the whole process even easier. So first things first, if you've never had chickens before, you're gonna wanna do your research first. Make sure you're allowed to have them where you live and make sure you actually want to commit to them. They're pretty easy if you do things right. And another good way to tell if you are serious about committing to this or not is you could find a friend or a neighbor that has them and maybe you could go over for the day and meet them and see all that goes into their care. And I also highly recommend that you subscribe to this channel and check out all of my many other chicken videos so you can see for yourself all the care that goes into it and see if it's something that you might be interested in. If you're ready to get chicks, you can get them from a local breeder, you can get them from a hatchery online. You could hatch your own eggs in an incubator. Or you can do what we're going to do now, and that's go to the feed store. Let's go. Lots of peeping, so that's a good sign. We want to warm them up first so that way their bodies aren't in shock and then once they warm up we show them where to drink and then we can give them their food. Why are you in the water? Little red one. Once they're warmed up you can just really gently dip their beak into the water and then set them down again so that way, you know, you don't want to overwhelm them. They'll start teaching each other how to do it too. Once you do a few, the others will start copying. Well, they're, they're all light. So these are the Easter Eggers. They come in all different colors and patterns and shapes because they're technically a mix. Okay. So they're mixed with an Americana, which is a blue egg laying breed, but they're kind of rare and really expensive. So that's why hatcheries do the mix, which are really Easter Eggers. But they call them Americana, they just spell it differently, so that way they can technically get away with it without false advertising. But they can be mixed with a number of different breeds along with an Americana, so that's why they look so different. But generally they lay eggs pretty well, and they're really friendly. And their eggs will either be blue, green, or like a pinkish brown. They're having a mosh pit. So. The blue Oscarlorps are a really, really friendly breed. They're dual purpose, which technically the buff Orpingtons are too. So the blue Oscarlorps and the buff Orpingtons lay medium to large sized light brown eggs. And they're both a really, really friendly, quiet, gentle breed. So they're really good for kids and for beginners. So since they're all huddled together under the light, that's normal because they just got here. So they're still warming up and recovering. Uh -huh. But afterwards, if they're still like this, that means they're too cold. So what you want to see after they're done recovering from shipping, you want to see them more spread out. I have an Easter egger named Bluebell, and she lays green eggs, and this is what she looked like when she was a chick. Aww. 
really cute. Love how poofy their cheeks are. They all look pretty good and alert though. This one's like a little owl. They ship them priority overnight in small boxes with heaters. And they don't want to have them in a huge box because if they stay in a small one, they can keep each other warm better. Yeah. Okay, so we are at the feed store. They're closed today, and if you're new to this channel, don't worry, I manage the store. I didn't break into this joint, but I didn't want to disturb customers, so we're gonna film today. I came in to take care of the baby chicks since we're closed on Sunday, and I thought since I'm here, I'll take the opportunity to show you some different supplies that you're gonna need if you plan on buying chicks. So first and foremost, you're gonna need a heat source for your chicks, because for the first week, they need to be kept around 95 degrees Fahrenheit, and then each week you can drop it by five degrees until they're fully feathered. There are actually a couple different methods that you can use, but we'll start here with the old fashioned traditional heat bulbs. You can get these in red or in clear. I recommend getting them in red because if you have them in clear, the chicks are gonna think that it's daytime all the time. They're not gonna sleep as well. And if any of them happen to get injured, they're gonna see the blood on each other and the other chicks are gonna peck at them. And with this one, everything will look red. So if a chick happens to come to you injured or if something happens, it's going to help mask that so they won't peck on each other. So obviously if you get a bulb, you're going to need a heat lamp for it. And you're going to want to attach it to something securely. You can see it has clamps that can hook onto the side of an enclosure. And it's not a bad idea to double secure that. Maybe use some zip ties around here to hold it into place even better because you don't want to ever risk anything with a fire hazard especially when it comes to chicks because if for some reason this falls down it's going to land in the shavings because most people use shavings for their chicks as bedding and that's a huge quick fire hazard and you don't want to burn your chicks either so if you use the heat lamp make sure it's secured to something very tightly there are going to be pros and cons to either heating method that we're going to talk about but we'll move on to the next one a little bit later in the video so anytime you have to keep something at a certain temperature, you're going to want to get a thermometer to keep in there just to make sure that everything is running properly. If your chicks are too cold, they're all going to be huddled together tightly under the heat lamp as close to it as they can get, and that's not a good sign. You'll have to lower the heat lamp if you see that happening. If they're spread out and panting, then you know they're too hot. And if they're, you know, just acting normal, eating, drinking, chirping, taking naps, just, you know, walking back and forth, then you know that they're happy and comfortable but this is always good to help you ensure that everything's running smoothly. So here's a good example of how to set them up. If you're gonna have a lot of chicks, you can get a big Rubbermaid tub. It works really, really well. And the bonus is you can use it for a lot of other things once your chicks are grown. We have the heat lamp on one side, so that way if they want to cool off, they can walk over to the side where there's no heat lamp and they can cool off there. Here's our little Easter eggers. We only have a few left. They're always one of the most popular ones that we get. And you can see that they have their water mix over there that has the electrolytes and probiotics in it. And in the smaller one, it's plain water. And then there's their medicated chick feed. It's also not a bad idea to keep them on probiotics for at least the first week. You can even do it a little bit longer if you feel that you need to. 
These are real simple. They come in packs of three and you mix one packet to a gallon of warm water. You don't want to give chicks cold water because that's going to shock them. This brand also has electrolyte packets, which are really good to use for the first couple days, even the first week if you want to, or if you have any chicks that are sick or weak along the way. And the same rules apply. You mix one packet to a gallon of warm water. Now when you're using the probiotics and electrolytes, you should also get a smaller container of water to keep in there that is just plain water with no powder mixed in it. That way they can drink the electrolyte and probiotic mix or plain fresh water too if they need that. You're going to want to use a real actual chicken water because if you use a dish, they could drown in it because they're, you know, they're freshly hatched. They don't really know how to handle their bodies yet. They don't understand. So you want to take safety measures, especially when they're only a week old or less. Here's a look at the electrolyte packet. And you can even use this. Things like this are really helpful for baby chicks because most places that you get them, they are going to come to the feed stores shipped through the post office. Now, they are shipped priority overnight, so luckily, as long as there's no issues, they aren't in that box very long, but it still takes a toll on them. Or if you order them from the hatchery yourself, obviously they're going to be shipped to you. So it's good to give them the electrolytes and the probiotics and even this vitamin mix. Now, I can't speak for all of the stores, but for this store that I'm in charge of, when the chicks come in, we don't sell them right away. I hold them for a few hours, if not longer, depending on how they look when they come in, because I want to give them time to recover, so that way it benefits the animal as well as the customers, so that way when I do clear them to sell, the customers are going to get stronger, healthier chicks. It's also not a bad idea to stock up on some first aid supplies just in case there's any injuries. You never know if there's going to be an accident, so it's good to have these on hand. I am actually planning on making a first aid video in the future, so subscribe so you don't miss that. And if there happens to be any injuries, this stuff works pretty well. You put it on your chick or your chicken, and it's supposed to taste really bad so that way the other birds won't peck at it. But getting back on topic of hydrating them when you first get them, a lot of places sell one gallon chicken waters, which is really convenient because then it makes measuring out those packets super easy because you can just dump one packet of the probiotic or electrolytes right in the one gallon jug, mix it up, and then of course they come with bases that attach to them. Next, you're going to want to pick out some chicken feed for them. There's a lot of different brands out there, but I'm personally a huge fan of Neutrina Nature Wise. You've probably heard me talk about it in other videos. Chicks need to be on an 18% chick starter for at least 16 weeks, and a lot of people are really shocked by how long they need to be on it. But if you put them on a layer feed sooner, they're not going to grow properly because there's not enough protein in the layer feed, and there's a lot of calcium in the layer feed, understandably, because it's for hens that are laying eggs, so they need the extra calcium. But since chicks aren't laying eggs yet, all of that calcium that their bodies don't need in the adult layer feed is actually going to be extremely detrimental. It's going to make them not grow properly, their bones are going to become brittle, and when they do eventually mature and grow up, their eggs may be undersized for life. So it's not worth the risk of trying to cut corners. I know that the adult layer feed is slightly cheaper, but luckily they only need to be on this for a short period in their life. If you think about it, 16 to 20 weeks in the grand scheme of things is not that long. And if you're going to bring an animal into your care, you need to do it right. So we're in the warehouse. Here's some options of layer feed for when they're adults. And then here is the chick starter. It pays to get the big bag because the big bag actually is slightly cheaper because you're going to have to buy so many of the little bags to make them last 16 to 20 weeks that you'll definitely go through a couple of these. So save yourself some money, buy the large bags. And you can get a nice trash bin to store it in so that way the rodents don't get to it. This is always a hot topic. There's a medicated option and a non-medicated option. So some people say that if you get chicks that are vaccinated, you don't need to use the medicated option. And that's only true to a certain extent. The chick feed that you'll find here is medicated with amproleum, which helps prevent and treat coccidiosis. So if your chicks are vaccinated against coccidiosis, then that's correct. You don't need the medicated feed. But most hatcheries don't vaccinate against coccidiosis. Most only vaccinate against Merrick's disease, which has nothing to do with coccidiosis. So in that case, yes, it does actually pay to get the medicated feed because it's like an extra layer of protection for your chicks, especially if you have a large order. 
because it's just going to be a really good way to keep them healthy and prevent them from spreading a highly deadly disease. Because if they contract that and they don't get treatment quickly, they're going to go downhill really, really fast, especially when they're young like this. Pine shavings are a great option for your chicks because the pine helps mask the smell and they're nice and soft so that way your chicks will be comfortable. However, you should avoid using sawdust because the pieces are so small that they might accidentally ingest them and then they'll become impacted. So for the first week, your chicks aren't going to be too interested in treats. They're way too small, they don't need them. But they grow fairly quickly, so once they're a couple weeks old, you can start slowly introducing certain treats. You can get a chick stick for them. It's a very high protein snack that's filled with all sorts of good things. Let's take a look at the ingredients. It's got crab meal, flaxseed, beef, cinnamon, all sorts of stuff. And you can see the stick in there so that way you can hang it up so that way the chicks won't stand on it and make it dirty. It'll help keep them occupied and give them some extra nutrients and protein. And as they start to get bigger, you can also give them mealworms. It's a high protein snack and it's really, really beneficial because if you feed them this from your hand, it'll make them become super tame and really friendly. And who doesn't want that? It's normal for a lot of chicks, especially once they hit the teenage stage. Some of them kind of become a little flighty and nervous of a lot of things as they're becoming more aware that there's dangers out there in the world. So that's perfectly normal, but that's part of why feeding them this is such a good thing because it'll help them get used to you and become tame and friendly. So that way when they're adults, interacting with them will be super easy. So now we're going to go back to my house and I'm going to go over another heating method and some really cool easy hacks and tips to make raising chicks so much easier. And we're going to go over some more care tips as well. Alright, so we're back at my house and I have some Easter egg or chicks here with me. Three of them, you can't see them all because some are under here, but three of them are for my aunt. And then this little dark one is mine, but I have my aunt's with mine still so that way she's not alone because I don't get my other chick until next week. So I'll update you guys once I get her. And then once I have the company for mine, the other three are gonna go to my aunt's house so she can have them with her. So I'm hoping that if you already have chickens, you know this. I feel like most people should know this, but in case you're very new to owning chickens, they are social animals, you can't have just one. If you have just one, it's gonna be scared, it's gonna feel vulnerable, it'll be lonely. And in the winter time, it won't have company to help keep it warm. So make sure you never keep just one single chicken. That would be very unethical. So now that that little tidbit is out of the way, you can see here that I'm using a heat plate like I talked about when I was in the store. And a heat plate is another option to keep them warm. And this one kind of mimics a mother hen because they go under it. Now, you're going to have to show them when you first introduce this to them how to do it. And the way I did that was... I would just really gently pick them up and I would slide them under it and I would kind of keep my hand there for a second so they could feel that it was warm and comfortable under there and I did it with all of them and it only took a few minutes and they caught on very quickly and they really like it. And you can see here that it has different holes on the side so that way as the chicks grow you can lift this up and raise it and make it taller so that way it's more comfortable for them and they're not squished under there. Now, one super annoying thing about the heat plate is that it doesn't take long for them to realize that they can jump up here and they like to roost. And when they're roosting on here, they're going to poop and it's a pain to clean. So I'm going to show you a little hack. You can get yourself some press and seal and you just cut it to size, get it on here nice and tight right on the top. And then that way, when they do start roosting on there, you can peel it off each day throw it away and put a new one on so that way cleanup is super easy. So one thing I do like about the heat plate more than the heat lamp is, like I was talking about in the store, I feel like it's just a little bit safer. There's not quite as much as a fire hazard, but make sure you read the reviews on these and make sure you get a good reliable brand because you don't want one that's going to malfunction and accidentally burn the chicks. Now you can see healthy chicks are pretty mobile. If they get too hot under there, they're going to come out on their own. So just make sure you get a brand that has good reviews, one that's nice and sturdy so it won't fall apart and land on them, and you should be good to go. But like any kind of electrical device, make sure you monitor it, especially when you first plug it in. It's actually not a bad idea to run a heat lamp or to run the heat plate for a day or two in advance before introducing your chicks. That way you can make sure that everything's functioning properly, and that way you'll have time to fix it if it's not. And speaking of which, if you're going to use a heat lamp... It's not a bad idea to get a spare bulb or two as well. 
So another little care hack is that a super annoying thing that happens with chicks is they kick their shavings into the water. They can't really help it, it's not their fault, but it's a pain because you have to change it out so often. But I have another little tip that's going to help that. So you can get some pieces of wood and some hardware cloth and you can build a little stand. Kind of like, you know, just a little square or a rectangle that's slightly elevated so that way they can still easily jump onto it. But it's not so low that they can kick the shavings into it and you can put your waterer on that. I'm going to show you an example because... Since as soon as the little Easter eggers rejoin my aunt, I'll only be raising two chicks, so I don't need a ton of space. I want to keep it simple. I didn't want to have to spend the money or get something bigger to put something like that in if I built it. So instead, I got a cooling rack. And I have one that has little legs on it, so that way there's some extra elevation. So once you have it in place, put this in the corner farthest from the edge so that way they don't track any shavings on and they should be good to go and if you need to you can get some pieces of wood or a brick to elevate that even further but make sure that they're able to easily access that especially the first week of life but they grow very quickly so make sure you elevate it as needed look how cute her little beard is I have a video all about Easter eggers, and I have another video with three different methods of raising chicks. So if you're interested in those, make sure you check those out too. I also have a video on how to tame your chicks and how to introduce them to the flock once they're big enough to go outside. See, it does not take long for them to realize they can do that. Oh, and if you think that this one looks like it has a little spot on its bottom, that's because the first day that it arrived after shipping, it had pasty butt. So I had to rinse that off, get it off of her, and she lost a little bit of her feathers when I cleaned her up, but she's doing really, really well now, perfectly fine, no issue. But that's just a teeny tiny bald patch that you might notice there. And make sure you guys subscribe so you can stay tuned for updates on these guys and on the new chick when it arrives. Chick season is now in full swing, so I'll be keeping you guys updated along the way. And at the store that I manage, we're going to be getting in new breeds every single week for the next couple months. So I'll update you with that as well.